Hi, I'm Helen from Woolly Chic. I design knitting and crochet patterns and I also teach crochet in Hitchin, Hertfordshire, where I live. My mum taught me to knit and crochet when I was a teenager, but it wasn't until my children were little that I picked up a crochet hook again and literally became hooked and I haven't stopped crocheting and now knitting uh, ever since. I began designing about eight years ago and started selling my patterns as part of kits, putting together my designs with British wool, some of which comes from my family's sheep farmed in Pembrokeshire, Wales. I love the fact that with a simple fibre like wool, you can create something really beautiful and unique, uh, like garments or handmade accessories, um, cushions, blankets. Yeah, the possibilities are limitless. Um, I'm also passionate about teaching crochet and passing on the skills that I have learnt. I'm really looking forward to being part of Yarn Lane TV and sharing some tips and tricks with you and I really hope that you enjoy watching. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Good morning and welcome to Yarn Lane. Is it afternoon? Yeah, I guess. I guess it's afternoon after 12. Good afternoon and welcome to Yarn Lane. So um, we've got the wonderful Helen from Woolly Chic on today. And she has got... The, hello, Helen. Wave. Hi. <laughs> She's like, oh, am I on there today? <laughs> yeah, so we've got... <laughs> Helen, I'm wearing one of her shawls. We have got two... Well, we. She has got two brand new shawls for you today. There's the first one, I'm just going, we're going to run through everything because we've got quite a, a few different things, different options of shawls and yarns. Um, now, don't forget, firstly, before all, before I do that, anyone who shops with Yarn Lane, same for Sewing Street, but including Yarn Lane, this week, from today all the way till Sunday, gets the free panel to make your very own Sewing Street Yarn Lane bag. So let me show you that. So if you've only just, I was talking about it on Sewing Street this morning, but if you've only just joined us on Yarn Lane, anyone who shops with us, once you check out, you only get one though, um, you will get this fabric panel, which has got the instructions and the piece for the bag front, the bag back and the handles to make your very own tote bag. So anyone who shops for free, this will be sent to you. Isn't it gorgeous? Now you can make it into whatever you want. It could be a tote bag for your shopping. It could be a, a bag to keep your latest knitting or crochet project in. Um, you could turn it into a cushion. You can make it whatever you want. But anyone who shops with Sewing Street or Yarn Lane this week will receive the panel. So you get Sewing Street on the front of you, on the back of your bag, obviously if you shopped on Yarn Lane, and then you get Yarn Lane on the front of your bag. So I've just got to cover that. So free, 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 but you do have to buy something with us. And it even has labels as well. So you can put your label on or you can use it for other things. So I'm going to start because we've got lots of different things. I'm going to start with the I Love Summer Scarf Kit. Isn't this gorgeous? Now it's only available one colourway because it works in one colourway. In this beautiful, it's made from, I've got to turn the right way up. <laughs> Helen's lovely heart spun yarn. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at this. My favourite part of it though, look, there's a love, uh, a better styled photo of it than me lying on the desk, are all these little hearts all the way along. So in the kit, the kit comes, you get a, um, a fabric bag with it all in. And we'll come up, right. So everything comes in a little bag with the instructions. 
and then you get a hang of the gorgeous Heartspun Natural Yarn, which is 70% Blue Face Leicester and 30% Tencel. So a lot of yarn often has nylon put in it to give it its strength, um, particularly sock yarn. But with Helen's Heartspun Yarn, she doesn't do that. She puts Tencel in it, which is eucalyptus. Oh, I remembered, which is eucalyptus. And it gives it the same strength, but it's obviously, obviously much more eco-friendly than using um, nylon. So you get that same strength. It also, the um, tensile gives it a little sheen, not shiny, just a sheen. And then it gives you that extra bit of strength. And all of the heart spun yarn is made in that way. So it's very green and friendly. Which sheep is it? <laughs> Blue face Lester. <laughs> it's the blue face Lester, the the which is the one at the back. No, it's the, the one at the front, because yeah. he has a blue nose, sort of. I think they have slightly blue noses, so it's made from the blue face Lester. Now, the blue, fa blue face Lester is our sort of British equivalent of the merino. It's, it is very, very soft. It feels like your merino wool, but it is beautifully soft. So and this so that's what you get with this yarn and it's it's perfect well for all sorts of knits and crochets but it's really good for shawls because it's very soft next to your skin. You also get all the little balls of the coloured yarn that you need to make all those little hearts all around the edge. Aren't they lovely? And obviously the instructions and crochet hook as well. You get two. A two and a half mil crochet hook and a three mil crochet hook, one for the shawl, one for the heart pom-poms isn't that gorgeous so it, i mean it is a summer scarf because obviously but you can wear it in the winter too you can wear it any time but it is really lovely isn't it you've got to arrange it so that you have all the little hearts in the right place but it's very long so it's really nice you know it's a nice it's kind of an accessory wear but actually because it's made from um this lovely this lovely blue face lester it's actually really warm as well lovely isn't it but what a, you know it's a real talking piece I think I've never seen a scarf that has all these really beautiful little hearts look all the way along the edge I love that anyway so everything you need is in that kit so next we've got Helen's brand new design called in the willow shade so this is her new shawl let me put that nicely now this shawl comes in various colours. So firstly, there is the um, willow in the room. So I'm going to mm -hmm. talk to Helen about this because there's a whole story behind why did you design the shawl okay. and where, how, what happened to the yarn? Right, well, it, the design came first. So I designed um, the pattern to feature what looks like willow leaves. And... Um, and I had already got fern green. Right. So I had already got a sort of natural colour in my collection. Mm. But um, I wanted a yarn, a colourway, that reflected the willow leaves. And right. uh, so I contacted um, good friends of mine, uh, Becky and Be and Marcus, who work for, well, who run this amazing company called Rivenitz. And they're really well known for producing fantastic um, variegated hand-dyed yarn in the most mm. beautiful and nature-inspired colours. It's absolutely yeah, stunning, isn't it's it? Gorgeous. It's sort of blue and green and lime and yeah. just yeah. all colours. And because of the way the, the shawl kind of falls with the sort of leaf pattern, yeah. you get the sort of light and shade it's, that you would have yes. from, from a willow tree. So it, it is absolutely fantastic. So I contacted um, Becky and I said, you know, I've got I've written this pattern. I'd really like the yarn mm. to be able to wow. sort of match the pattern. Gosh, and, that's uh, so yeah. bespoke, isn't it, to have yarn no, dyed to it, match it, your it pattern? It is fantastic. It's and she was really beautiful. pleased to work and, and collaborate mm. on the project. Um, they, they're they called Rivenets because they actually live on uh, an arrow boat. Mm. And they're, now they have a big dye studio in Weedon in um, Northamptonshire and that's right on the river mm. and so everything is inspired by you know what's surrounding them in their home and in their workplace 
And yeah, so they they were able to come up with this kind of m magical colour, really. It's just beautiful. It is. It is really beautiful, isn't it? It's really hard to photograph and it's really hard to um, to show, you know, it's, yeah, tr it's yeah. true colour. It changes colour because in that photo with you wearing it in the sunlight, yes. it's a different colour to in the, studio. the one that I've got here yeah, in the studio. Yeah. No, it is. It's, it's very... It, and I think because the yarn has got that uh, tensel in it, mm. it gives it that sort of sheen as yeah. well. So yeah. it, it not only has a lovely sort of range of colours in one skein, but it also has got the kind of, um, yeah, the, the, the sheen that comes with mm. the, the tensel. So this is, so the, this, the scarf itself is quite an unusual shape as well, isn't it? It is. So it's, so it's like, asymmetric. I, yeah, so it's... That's the bit that you would wear, but then this bit is longer. So this is the bit you can then wrap yeah, round. Yeah. It's really unusual, isn't it? I love that. Oh, I am put enough on. You've got to get it, get it round right. And you there can kind of tie one end and to the other. And you can tie one end to the other. But it's a beautiful scarf, really beautiful. And it's, you know, as I say, it's, I mean, it, I've got to get it on right, you can tie one to the other. But you can use it as obviously a, a beautiful accessory because it's a lovely colour. But because it's got the blue face less to it, it's very warm. So it'd be a really nice thing in the winter to wear underneath your coat and it just fill that coat hole. Yeah. But in the summer yeah. as well, or the spring or the autumn, you know, it's a really nice accessory. So in, in this kit, you get the crochet pattern for the In the Willow Shawl which is here, and then you get 100 grams. So then we've got this um, in the Willow Shade Shawl in a choice of colours. So you can buy the kit that's got the pattern and the specially dyed Willow yarn. So that's why it's called Willow in the Willow Shade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but then we've also got it in Fern Green, and here's a sample of it. So this is, the, um, this is Helen's own yarn but that's dyed in the fern green colourway, which is this one here. And obviously you get the instructions as well. There's Helen wearing her, model Helen in her fern <laughs> green in the Willow Shade shawl. It's beautiful, isn't it? I love the pattern. It is, it really is like willow leaves. Again, in this kit, you get the pattern and you get the 100 grams but you will need a 3.5 mil crochet hook, which we do have separately if you don't have it. If you just have a look on the website or we'll scroll down under watch live, if you don't have a three and a half mil, you'll need to buy that separately. The, the next color we have, which is one that Helen's got, so she'll show you in a minute, is this one, the denim blue, which is the same color as my blouse, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So that's the denim blue. It's lovely, but you can actually, with the darker colors, you can see the sheen better. Mm, yeah. It really shows up, yeah. doesn't it? So you get your 100 grams of the um, heartspun yarn, which again is the um, Blue Face Lester mixed with the tensile. That's that one. And then finally, we've also got it in the raspberry. So this is the um, shawl made up, which I think that will so actually, what you should do is tie, I'm going to get this right, tie the two ends together. Yeah. <laughs> then they don't come undone and fall off like mine did. Then you tie the, the two ends together. And then you, if I'm not going to wrap it around because I'll mess up my microphone. <laughs> but then you can wrap it around. But that's what it will look like if you wear it properly like that. Um, and then that comes with the raspberry yarn. Now... We've also got, before we move over to the demo, there's, there's it finished where it looks nice, more nicely arranged <laughs> than I managed to do it. Um, if you want to buy the yarn on its own for your own makes, it's a four ply yarn, perfect for, well, any four ply knits like shawls, really good for socks because it's got the tensel in it, it's very strong. So if you want to buy the willow yarn on its own, let me move these other way. 100 grams, 24.99. Remember, it is Blue Face Leicester and Tencel. I'm going to just give it a little twirl for you. Mm -hmm. And that is the hand dyed by River Knits in the Willow Shade. So that's that one. We've also got the Fern Green on its own. That way. I can never get right, left, left. <laughs> and my left. 100 grams 
of the fern green again it's the same yarn so it's a four ply if you just want the yarn on its own then we have the denim blue i've got a little wool shop here <laughs> isn't that good i mean it's so soft and it smells of sheep <laughs> which is lovely no smelly sheep you know but just nice clean sheep but it smells of sheep it's lovely that's what I was saying in Sewing Street earlier when we had the wool pressing mats that we use. Yeah. I love them because they smell yeah. of sheep. <laughs> so that's the blue. Um, then we have raspberry, which you've seen in one of the kits. That's the raspberry. There we go. Should we give a little twirl? But it does have that really natural feel to it. Um, purple. Oh, turn around. There's purple. I love the way that you can see almost part of the cream coming through as well, though. So mm. it's not really solid, is it? Yeah, I think that's the tensile. It means that it doesn't. It takes the dye okay. differently. And it's lovely, though, isn't it? Because it almost, well, not a fleck, but just a, yeah. gives a bit of texture yeah. to it. Mm, I know. Well, anyone who works with it just loves it. It's beautiful yarn. We've had lots of really good feedback about it. And then we've got pink. I love this one. This is a really soft, pretty pink. It's not even sort of pastel or eye. It's just a pretty pink, isn't mm. it? Just, it's the sort of pink that goes very well with charcoal grey. And then finally, the totally undyed and natural is this one. Yeah, so if you wash a sheep and keep it out of the field, this is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> The ones you see in fields are just gone. <laughs> this is washed sheep colour. Oh. But it's lovely, isn't it? Anyway, so we, ha so we have the summer shawl and then we have in the willow shade shawl in all the different colours of in the willow and, all the, and the yarn as well. Anyway, so Helen, what should we start with? Now we've been through everything. Welcome yeah. again. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Well, um, I thought I would demonstrate uh, how to start um, the in the willow shade yes, shawl. Yes, right. Um, and it actually starts at the, the longest end. And because it is uh, an asymmetric um, shawl, it then decreases to, uh, to, to just a point. And it, so it feels like you're, you're getting quicker and quicker. Oh, I like so that. So by starting yes. at the longest point, you know that it's... It's um, only going to get that, better. Yeah, that each row is going to take you less and less oh, time. Okay. So. Um, but my heart always sinks when I see a pattern that starts kind of like with what seems like 200 chain stitches. Oh, I know. And you try counting them. You count them and mm. you lose count. And change. And then when you do your first row, you end up like thinking, I've miscounted because the stitches don't work mm. out in the, in the first constantly. row. Constantly. Yeah, constantly. Mm. So all the time. So with this pattern, I thought, I'm not going to have a foundation chain as the first row. I'm going to start with uh, foundation stitches and build up the stitches as you go. So this is a, a chainless foundation so row. So can you use that technique for any crochet? It, well, I think most, most crochet patterns would start with perhaps a, a row of just double crochet stitches or treble crochet stitches. Yeah, well, they stitches. always say um, yeah. chain... 200, 200 yeah. or 50 or whatever and yeah. then from that you work backwards and then your first row would be crochet into every yes, chain yes, stitch yeah. a double crochet stitch well this and I, and so what i'll demonstrate is how to do um foundation double crochet stitches right so without you without a chain and with, certainly with this pattern, it then makes it a lot easier to count because you're counting the leaves yes. rather than counting the stitches. Why does everyone do that then? Um, well, it, I suppose it's a bit fiddly. It, it's, not, it's actually not fiddly, but I don't know. I, uh, yeah, also, I think, does that make it stretchier? Because um, you know when you, like, you do a blanket yeah. and you do that foundation yeah. chain and that one end is always a bit... Yeah. And certainly when you're, when you're starting out learning to crochet, your, your chain stitches might actually be very tight. Yes. And yeah. therefore, 
the bottom of your work will then be really, Indeed, really tight. Indeed, mine always is. Yeah, so um, I would always say if you, if you are finding that situation, mm. uh, go up a hook size for your foundation chain and then come down to the hook that the pattern suggests. So right. have a loose foundation chain anyway, but with the foundation um, double crochet mm. stitches, then yes, it's much looser. That's so, it. I'm right. I'm right. Really so need to learn I'm, how to do this. I've I'm going never to, done this before. So I'm just going to demonstrate with with now. double knit yarn. The um, the shawl both both the shawl patterns are with four ply. Right. Um, but I thought it's quite kind it's of easier it's, to it's, it's easier to it? see. It's easy to demonstrate. Um, so. So we start off in exactly the same way as if you were to do a uh, foundation chain. You start with your slip knot. So yeah, you, you just need to go right just to tad. There we it. go. There you go. So you put your slip knot, slip knot onto your hook. And to do a foundation double crochet, and I and I always teach in um, UK Good. Um, terminology. <laughs> so rather than a, if it's a if you see a pattern with a single crochet, you know that it is uh, an American pattern. Yes, so, can you just have worked that yeah, out? Because the Americans are only ones who have single crochet. That's it. That's mm. it. So to start off my, um, my foundation row of double crochet stitches, I'm just going to do two chains. So yarn around the hook and pull through the loop. Yarn around the hook and pull through the loop. And I've got two chains on mm -hmm. my... I've got one loop on my hook, but two chains. Then I'm going to put my hook into the first of those chains that I made, making sure... Oh, to the bottom one. Yeah, making sure that I, that I go through just the bottom loop so that there's two parts of the stitch on top of my hook. Then I'm going to go yarn around the hook and pull through the chain stitch so that I've got two loops on my hook. And then instead of finishing off this double crochet stitch by pulling through both of those two loops, I'm going to go yarn around the hook and just pull through one of those loops. Right. And that is what makes your foundation chain. So that's, that's your chain stitch in effect. You've still got two loops on your hook. Okay. And then yarn around the hook and pull through both of those loops. So that's my first foundation double crochet stitch. To make my second, I go into where you make that chain through both so you're going under both parts of the stitch and you're pulling through one loop actually i didn't quite go in the right place so this is where it is a bit fiddlier so you mm. have to just find where the where the stitch is that's better and pull through i've got two loops on my hook yarn around the hook and pull through just one of those loops and that makes the chain yarn around the hook and pull through those two loops. So that's your double crochet. I'm just going to do another couple. Okay, so, I'm so going you into always the stitch. go through the yep. two loops just to the side of where you're... That's it, yeah. That's quite easy. So yeah, it is really easy. So you've got two loops and then you just pull through one of those loops, two loops, and then yarn around the hook and pull through those two loops to finish off your stitch. Into the stitch. So it's like doing a treble but without wrapping your yarn around, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Two and then pull through one loop so there's two stages to it yeah. and then two loops if i just do one more so i guess it's just that first one making sure you get in the right place but if it's not quite the second one's easier yeah so there this is the second stage and then what we can do is we can have a look at the bottom and you can see along the bottom of those stitches the series of v's which would be identical to if you've made your foundation yeah. chain. So you've got a series of V's at the bottom, and then if we turn them around to the top, we've got a series of V's along the top and as well. Sh show me how you would count those, because I think that's something people really struggle with, is yeah. which one is one? So yeah, so you don't count, your, you, you don't count the, the one with the slip knot. You just lie it on the side, and you can see that the V here is your first mm -hmm. stitch. So I've done one, two, three, four, five okay. double yeah. crochet Easy stitches. Then. And you can count it from the bottom as well. So there should be five V's at the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five V's corresponding at the bottom. And what you've created, if you just did this a really long one, it would be almost like French knitting. It would be <laughs> like a continuous braid. And I have seen, um, 
patterns where you can use that to make straps <laughs> on like bikini tops okay. or um, that sort of thing. So, so that's how you do the, so if a pattern starts off with your first row of double crochet in every chain yes. stitch, you can do this do instead. Do that instead. So you can use, yeah. so once you've got the kit and the pattern home, you can use this technique. Yeah, that's I'm it. going yeah. to, I hate doing yeah. that because also it's really hard to crochet into, isn't it? really hard yeah I can never especially decide. if your stitches are really small so but also <laughs> even if they're loose they seem sort of too big and floppy don't they yeah and also it's difficult to see one stitch from the next stitch yes. so so if you are a beginner and you're not used to identifying which mm. are the v's of the chain stitch it's easy to miss one it's easy to put two stitches into one well, chain. Well, I think it was what puts people off once they've learned, say, granny squares and going round, is when they start doing backwards yeah. rows of. Yes, yeah, because forwards, but the rows edges of. are never straight because no. you've done an increase mm. somewhere along the along the, um, but this along is the row. it's definitely easier. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a complete it. game Love changer. It. Yeah, it is, <laughs> and I'd never even heard of it. So you can do the same thing for your treble crochet stitches. So in this, with treble crochet, you start off with your three three chains just like at the edge of every pattern you have a turning chain which is three chains so then you go yarn around the hook as if you were making a treble crochet stitch and you go into that first chain again making sure that you've got two parts of the stitch lying on top of your hook catch the yarn and pull it through the chain stitch you've then got three loops on your hook now, normally, if you were doing a treble crochet stitch, you would pull through two of those loops and then you pull through the mm. last two loops. But because we want to make that foundation chain, we're then just going to pull through one loop and that then makes your chain. And you can kind of hold on to that so you know that that's where your, um, that's where your hook is going to go into for the next stitch. Then you're going to go finish the stitch by yarn around the hook and pull through two loops, yarn around the hook and pull through two loops. So that's made your first treble. Yarn around the hook, and then you're going to come into that chain stitch that you made. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn around the hook and pull through one loop, making your chain. Pull through two, and pull through two. Yarn around the hook, into the stitch. And you can see there's two parts lying on top of my hook catch the yarn and pulling it through. You've got three loops on your hook. To make your chain, you pull through one, then you pull through two, and you pull through two. Now these are really easy to count. Treble crochet stitches are really easy to count mm. because they are like posts, and they're yes. taller than yeah. a double crochet stitch. So you've then got your turning chain, you have three, um, three chains, which was your first counts as your first treble. So that's one, two, three, four. So I've made four. And you can see again that there are your rows of Vs on the top mm. and your rows of Vs along the bottom. Wow, so this technique is for double or treble. Yeah, that's it. And then with the In the Willow Shade Shawl, mm. it combines both. Oh, okay. And so at the, bottom of the, uh, at the bottom of the shawl, you can see that there's this sort of scalloped effect and that yes. is a combination of your double crochet and your treble crochet foundation stitches. So if I show you how to combine those two together, mm. then you'll see how it produces that effect. So we start off with a double crochet, foundation double crochet. So I start off with two chains and then go into the first of those chains and pull up a loop. I've got two loops on my hook. Yarn around the hook and pull through one loop. I've got two. Yarn around the hook and pull through those two. Now the next stitch is a foundation treble stitch. So I'm going to go yarn around the hook and into, into the stitch. Three loops on my hook. Yarn around the hook and pull through one, making the chain. Yarn around the hook, pull through two. Yarn around the hook, pull through two. I'm going to do that again for the second um, foundation treble. Three loops on my hook, yarn around the hook and pull through one, yarn around the hook, pull through two, yarn around the hook, pull through two, and then finish off with 
a double crochet stitch. So I'm going straight into the stitch and pulling through. I've got two loops on my hook. Pull through one and pull through two. And you can see it's produced the bottom of the leaf. Mm, yeah, I can see that. And then yeah, to join the leaves together, to you've got you then do four chains. One, two, three, four. And then I start again with my double crochet, whereas I go into the second uh, chain from my hook and I put my hook in, pull through, pull through, go through one loop, go through two, do a treble. Sometimes it's a bit fiddly. Pull through one loop, pull through two, and then pull through two. And I'll finish, so I finish this part of the leaf and then I'll show you where you then do your, your first row um, of your foundation after you've done this foundation row. So I'll just finish off with a double crochet, pull through one loop and pull through two loops. So you can see I've got two, the oh, bottom yeah. of two leaves. And that's the base of the and leaves. And that's the base of it. Now some patterns will then tell you to turn and work along these stitches. But with my pattern, I actually want you to work into what, what would have effect been the foundation chain. Right. So at this point, you then follow the pattern and start with two chains as your turning chain. And then you're working into the V stitches along the straight edge of those, mm. uh, of those leaves. And you're then working into the stitches into each of the stitches and just doing ordinary trebles or following for the first row it's trebles but this pattern also includes um, increases and decreases which in crochet is very very easy because you're just um, you're just crocheting two into one stitch for an increase or decreasing two together so I'm joining my two leaves together with um, with chain stitches. So if, so this is a really basic um, crochet Yeah, so pattern. it really is just double and it's, double and treble. Yeah, yeah. after the foundation, mm. uh, yeah, after the foundation um, row, then it's mainly treble crochet stitches and um, chain stitches. Mm. So that's kind of so you don't need to be an expert then? You don't. If you can make a granny square, you can, you can do this. You can yes. definitely do this. So if this. you've learned with Helen the granny squares, you know, right from the very beginning, this is your next stage, yes, isn't it? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so I, now I, I'm using a three and a half millimeter um, crochet hook with the double knit that I was just mm. demonstrating with there. You, um, you, can, you can use a three and a half millimeter hook with four ply as well and you just get a more drapey okay. open uh, you know open fabric well it hasn't got to fit has it so it no, doesn't really matter no. depends on what you feel comfortable with so i just wanted to show you on the uh, on the shawl itself mm. the decreasing because all this um because you're you're as i said at the beginning you start off with the widest pot um, yes, part of, the, of the shawl and then you decrease at the um, beginning of every new leaf that you're making every row that has a new leaf you, you do the decrease mm. I also wanted to say that you can make this as wide as you like now the the shawl you've got in front of you Rebecca has, it does look wider. It's a lot wider. So the pattern is for it. 100 yes. grams of my heart spun yarn. Mm. The shawl that you've got, I made with 200 grams. Oh, okay. So I made it sort of twice the size. Yes. Um, and to do that, so if you wanted to get an extra skein and make it more a kind of shawl that you want to sort of wrap yourself up right. in. Right, yes, I can see because this raspberry one I've got yeah. is about half. So is the, smaller. Yeah, so the small one is um, 20 leaf, leaves to begin with. 20 leaves. 20 leaves. <laughs> um, whereas the one that you have <laughs> is um, 30. Oh, so, okay. you, so you increase the number of, of leaves when you start, when you do your foundation row. Mm. 
and then you're decreasing. But you don't want to run out of yarn. So I would say if you are, are just... Um, yes, if you wanted it If you bit. have just got 100 grams of four ply, yeah. then you start with 20. So, um, so That's yes, lovely. but it's a really nice adaptable pattern. Yeah. Um, and a friend of mine uh, tested it and she actually tested, she, as an experiment, she tested it in reverse. So she started from one leaf oh, okay. and then increase. So you can kind of do that, but the, <laughs> that's not what the pattern says. No. So, um, okay, so I'm coming up to the, I'm doing a row where I'm starting a new bottom of, uh, of the leaves. And this is where you make two treble crochet stitches into the top of the treble crochet stitch um, of the row below. You then join them by, um, before moving on to the next leaf, you then do uh, four, no, three chains, and then yarn around the hook. Yeah, you need to go just right just a little bit, that's it. There we go, in the middle. So yarn around the hook into the, into the stitch, pull through two and pull through two for your first treble, and then I'm increasing here, so I'm going back into the same stitch and finishing off. So that, that finishes this one. Now, I don't want to make a new leaf in this last leaf on the, uh, on the edge. So I'm just going to do three chains and then a double crochet stitch into this, into this leaf, top of the leaf. And that, that finishes off that edge. And then moving on to uh, carrying on the next row, I start with four chains turn the work and make two treble crochet stitches into the next treble stitch and two into the next oh, one. So you start off, so the leaf starts off with two trebles and yeah. then moves to four trebles. Yeah. And then and then you end up decreasing okay. down to one. Can you just lay that? Can you so then you can see how the yeah. edge oh, then is yeah. starting to um, to take shape. Yes, yeah, so you can see from the leaf below how yeah. it starts off with just the two trebles and then moves yeah. up and then comes back like a yeah. window. Whereas on the other opposite side, this is the straight side. So this is the side where you're keeping it. I mean, it's wavy, but it's uh, but one in top of the other. So it's straight one side, and all the decreases happen on the mm. on the right hand but side. But probably easier to count in that way to keep it. Straight mm. because you're counting leaves. Yes, yes. <laughs> but also, you, you once you've got this pattern in your head, you do not need to even look at the pattern. No, no. You just can keep. You know, it's the same row after row, and because you're decreasing, you can you, you can see mm. how you don't. There, there's no counting needed, which is uh, which is fantastic. Uh, I love patterns where there's yeah. no counting. Um, and in my patterns, I um, I all I, I write the the. Um, the written instructions out in full, mm. but I also include a chart. So oh, okay. you'll, you'll find that the chart is. And, um, and the, the uh, In the Willow Shade um, title of the shawl comes from a poem by um, Christina Rossetti. Okay. So you get an extract of the Oh, so do uh, we get the the an poem. extract of the yeah, poem? Yeah, so just oh, like yes. with my Harmony of Leaves um, scarf. Oh, of course, uh, this, yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of inspired by nature poetry. So, um, mm. so yeah, so you, so you get the instructions. You also, um, that there is a, a detailed explanation and photographs on how to do the foundation double crochet stitch and the treble crochet stitch. Uh, and oh, there's yeah, also no, links nice to, clear, I have it? made a, a YouTube video, but obviously you can watch this back now. Exactly. So, uh, yes. So, so you so can yes. just watch, watch it back. Um, just remember the date. Yeah. So you can watch it. Um, so, so the most popular colourway at the moment, unsurprisingly, is the in the willow shade. In the willow oh. in the willow shade. Yeah, it is one. beautiful. So the yarn goes with the pattern, doesn't it? The but, yarn, you know, yes. If you want a different yeah. colour, that's fine. You can choose any of the other colours. Um, if you want to make it bigger, like Helen was saying, then get the kit and then just buy an, an extra um, hank of yarn and then you can make it as bigger. But it is beautiful. Oh, it, and each one will be slightly different as well, won't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's really lovely. Right, so that is the In the Willow shade. Yeah. Remember, it comes in willow, fern, denim, raspberry, 
Yes. And then the yarn itself. So let's just move on to the in the summer. I love summer. I love, I love summer. summer. In the we willow. could just do and with I a love bit more summer. More sun yes. in this summer. It's still very summery this oh, morning. It really was grey and miserable. So this would cheer up. This a British because, summer day. So in this it? kit, you get everything. You get the bag to put it in. You get the pattern. You get the um, hank of natural undyed heart spun yarn you get two crochet hooks because you need different sizes and you yeah. get all the little balls yeah. of the colors but again all in the heart spun yarn so yeah. everything you need is in this beautiful kit so where do we start so i just oh just a little note about this beautiful pattern yes uh, this pattern was written by sandra paul of um cherry heart uh, she has written some beautiful, beautiful patterns. Um, and so we did a bit of a collaboration with um, putting together the heart spun yarn with her pattern. Yes. And, um, and she, yeah, so she writes beautifully and all of her patterns are really well described, well written. They come with charts, they come with photographs, okay. they come with stitch tables. I mean, it's it's absolutely... So very easy to follow. Yeah, then. very, very easy to follow. And she also does uh, tutorials on her website oh, as okay. well. Um, so the uh, the nice thing again about this um, this shawl scarf pattern is, again, it starts at one end with uh, just three stitches, then you're increasing to the middle, and then you're decreasing down to just one stitch. So it, it is a really nice pattern. Again, not with that daunting 200 chain stitches right, at, the, at okay. the beginning. So you make the kind of body of the scarf, then you add a border to one side, and then you make all these tiny, teeny, weeny little of um, hearts. A so, sprinkling of colorful hearts. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I love them, they are so, I thought I would show you how to make these hearts and and um, and again in the heart spun the reason why the kit has two sizes of uh, crochet hook is because the hearts you actually use a, uh, a two and a half millimeter hook okay. so they are teeny tiny and um, and you would think they would be really fiddly but because you start with a, uh, a magic ring they're actually not as fiddly as they look. Okay. So I'm not going to dememonstrate it with a two and a half millimeter hook. No, and no, the let's, four let's ply. I'll, I've got some of my Pembrokeshire um, double knit. No, it's much uh, easier to see yeah, anyway, so isn't it? So I will show you how to make the um, the teeny tiny hearts and uh, yeah, and she. Um, so do we make the whole shawl first? You make the whole shawl, shawl first, and then when you are joining, when you're doing your final. Um, row of your border you then uh, pick up you, you sort of crochet into the heart right okay. So, uh, okay so you add them at the very end right? oh so they are crocheted in rather than sewn in yeah yeah okay so i'm just going to find the and i love the fact because it's all using your yarn they, they are very neutral natural colors yeah neutral, but they're, they, nat although they're bright yeah they and they go together they go as together well. yeah and they are um, they have a synchronicity yes and the, and again they've got this kind of sheen mm. sheen to them so they do shimmer. yeah no, they, they do. do shimmer they're so, so pretty Okay, so before I made this um, this scarf, I didn't really like magic ring. I, I kind of, I don't know, I was a bit nervous of magic <laughs> ring for some reason. But by the end mm. of doing all those hearts, oh, I'm an expert now. Yeah, no, you have to <laughs> so, do that. Yeah. I had to, what, every time I did a magic ring, I always had to go back to YouTube. And yes, eventually yeah. I can do it. Well, it's yeah, so I don't know why I was scared of it, mm. because actually it's really easy. So to to do a magic ring, you you lay the tail end of your yarn across your the the palm of side up of your fingers and wrap the yarn around three of those fingers cross it over and then put your hook underneath the first of those loops and catch the second loop to make a loop and then make a chain so it's like making a big slip knot but not pulling it tight. So there's your, there's the chain. And so you keep this loop just facing up towards you and you're crocheting over the yarn which is sort of twisted underneath. So the pattern is, it starts off with a double crochet stitch and so you're putting your hook, let me just show you that, so you're putting your hook 
into the middle of the ring underneath those stitches and you're pulling up so you've got two loops on your hook yarn around the hook and pull through those two for a double crochet then you make a chain and then three treble crochet stitches so yarn around the hook into the middle and pull through two and pull through two that's one two, three, and the next stitch is a half treble. So you start off exactly like you would make in a treble. You wrap the yarn around your hook, you put it into the middle and you pull through and you have three loops on your hook. Now you pull through all three of those loops for a half treble and then a double crochet stitch. So that's making the that's making the heart the, of the heart. It's making one side one side mm -hmm. of the heart. So now we're going to make the bottom of the heart by doing a half treble and pulling through, and then a treble, and then two chains. And this sort of makes this sort of extends the heart. Mm. So then we're just going to go back. It's uh, like doing a pico, where you then do a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. And then you do the second side. So you start off with a treble and a half treble and a double. And that's the bottom. Oh, okay. And then a half treble and then back to your three trebles. So half treble and then three, one, two, three. This is where I hope I've left a big, long enough tail. Right, I have. Okay, and then one chain. And at this point, you then take your tail and you give it a pull so that the hole, so your magic ring, closes up. And you can see you're left with a heart. Mm, lovely. So that's what you can do when you start a granny square. Yes, or you yeah, can do it with yeah, or some people do chains. Magic, yeah, them. magic rings are brilliant for um, amigurumi. So anytime you're right. making toys where you don't want this big hole in the middle, mm. then doing up starting off with a magic ring is brilliant. So and for a heart, it pulls it. It all. pulls it all in, and I'm using really it's, chunky wool here. Yeah, so, I like that. I like so the chunky, yeah, it's, chunky um, one. It, it means that then. Um, you know, I can sh show off the stitches. But mm. now to finish, Sandra says to go into the first chain and slip stitch into, well, go into the beginning double crochet. But actually what I found was easier is that if you put your hook right into the middle of your magic ring, right into the middle of your heart and slip stitch into there, that then really closes it up. So and that, the, yes, that pulls the yeah, two. And then to um, to bind off, you would then make a chain and pull up, pull up your big loop. This is how I always uh, finish off and cut at the top of the loop and pull it away. And there's your heart. And there's your heart. And there, and there is your heart. And so you've got then these tail ends here, which you just thread onto a wool needle and then weave back into those central mm. stitches. Um, but because you were working into a magic ring, it meant that you could, ha you could have space to do all of those stitches and yes. then pull them all in together rather than trying to do just start off with two chains and make all of your stitches into that Which first chain. Which would almost be impossible, wouldn't it? Well, it would with a two and a half millimeter hook and four mm. ply. I think that that would be really, really tricky. I think the thing is though with magic rings is that you do have to keep watching and watching and watching and it's just repetition. Yeah. So watch this back. And just yes. keep rewinding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got, I've probably got time just to do one more. Okay. I, don't do I end up shouting YouTube, going, hang on, hang yeah, on, hang yeah. on. So I'll change <laughs> colour just to do it in a different colour. Just because it's, even I was doing some granny squares the other day and it said chain four join in a ring. I thought, no, yeah. I'm doing a magic ring because it will be oh, neater. I know. And have you, have you seen these random acts of kindness that are, uh, that are on, um, I've seen them lots on, on Facebook where people have been making these little hearts 
and they've been attaching them to a little message and leaving them oh, around wow. parks and mm. uh, places just saying, oh, this is a really nice thing for you. Just take this home and, uh, you know, ha ha spread to spreading joy, wow. I suppose. And make so, hearts. And making well, little hearts nice. and little bumblebees and all the flowers <laughs> and various bits and pieces. <laughs> well, so, there you go. Uh, That's a good way so, to pa practice your magic ring, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Or uh, use up your odds and ends yes. of, uh, of yarn. So, yeah. So if I've got, I'll just do um, the magic ring again. So I've got the, the yarn tail lying over my um, palm up, wrap the yarn around, twist it over, turn it over. I've got two strands now and then I put my hook under the first one, pull up, pull up a loop, take the loop off of my fingers and then make a chain. But keep that, keep that ring open. And then I can start off with a pattern with a double crochet and a chain and then three trebles. So that chain that you make right at the beginning doesn't count. That's just no. a, a security. Yes, yeah. Although it is in the pattern. The pattern does yeah. say a chain. So, uh, so yeah. But I would always do a magic ring and then a chain straight away. And then, so if yeah. you were adapting another pattern yeah. to Yes, for an amigurumi, if it didn't say start off with a mm. chain, just start off with a double okay. crochet, then then yes. So that's, that's yeah. And these... Um, and these hearts, they're just really quick and they are, they do get a bit addictive. Yeah. And it's so <laughs> well, nice I know you could see, have to everything. Yeah, to see the pile of hearts kind of, um, you know, piling mm. up and... Uh, well, they're very quick, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're so very once you've read the pattern probably three times, then after that you remember yes. and you make lots of hearts. Yeah, and you yeah. could sew them on, they'd be, be nice edge for a blanket, wouldn't they? They would, yeah, yeah, they would. So once That's you've it. practiced the scarf, I love the scarf. So pretty, isn't it? You've got to make sure you get the hearts um, so that they dangle down. Yes. Yeah. Although I do. I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? You can do it however you want. But I would sort of want to arrange mine so I could see all my little hearts. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, if you've got a nice shawl pin or something, then uh, you can secure it into place with a shawl pin. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that'll stop it from kind of moving around too well, it's much. Quite, I quite like a shawl as a summer, sort of a summer accessory because it doesn't have to be from, for warmth, does it? It's just like wearing yeah. a necklace. So there you can see I've made all the stitches and you think, and it oh, looks that, nothing like it doesn't a heart. look it's anything like a, like a heart. But then when you do, when you pull the, uh, pull the tail, and this is where, you know, if you get the magic loop wrong and it, it just doesn't pull, then you have to start again. But, uh, but there we go. And, and suddenly uh, that flower becomes, yeah, it yeah. looks like a flower when you finished it, yeah, or half yeah. a flower. And then I just put my hook straight in the middle and finish with a slip stitch and then a chain and pull up a big loop and I don't think I was concentrating when I made this one it's not as sharp <laughs> at the bottom but uh, yeah it still looks like a heart there we go oh that's lovely yeah brilliant mm -hmm. so all the the scarf itself the cream part the main body is that quite simple very simple so so that i've just got the beginning bit yeah. of that um just, that's why i just i i yeah, just wanted so to it just is um yeah again just treble crochet oh, okay. stitches so you start with treble crochet stitches and chains you're doing one row of treble crochet into every chain space and stitch and then the next row is a treble crochet a chain and a treble crochet. Right. So and it's all in the pattern. It's, so. And the pattern is so No, well, well it's written. really, thank you for showing us the, yeah. the magic ring in that much detail and the hearts, because yeah. I think that's the most important. But isn't it lovely? I really want yeah. one of these. And the nice. the nice thing about the, the yarn, nice, and the reason why I've called them summer scarves, mm. is because wool is incredibly warm in the winter, but it's really cool yes. in the summer. Yes, good point. And you mentioned the merino sheep. Mm. Well, um, the British blue face Leicester is as soft as merino but it doesn't pill so if you get some merino sheep which are uh, merino wool which is so soft but you wear it and it's the sort of thing that you maybe wear a jumper you get all these bubbles yes. underneath yeah uh, but blue face leicester won't do that <gasps> So, so that's wow. the difference. In so, the, but it's in the, the same yarn. but better. Same but better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much. So, everything that we've have I got long enough to go through? Um, 
Okay, I'm allowed to go through the most popular ones. So the summer scarf that I'm wearing here with the gorgeous heart on the end. Um, if look at two. <laughs> okay. <It's come> <laughs> I know he's confusing me. He's looking at two. Why am I looking at two? Um, in the kit, you get the instructions. You get the... Um, you get the whole hank of the natural undyed yarn, all the little, all the little heart spools, and all the, in all of the colours, but they go together so well. And the two crochet hooks, but all the instructions you need to make this, and they all come in a little bag as well that you can keep to all your kit in, or if you're going to give it to someone, you can use it as a gift bag. It's a really, really nice little bag to keep it all in. If you want to make the in the willow shade shawl which is this one here, in the kit is the instructions and one hank of the four-ply yarn, which is dyed especially for Helen, called Willow, to look like Willow and to match the Willow shade. So it is, it's really, I think, totally unusual and completely unique to you. Yeah. But if you want the yarn just on its own, you can choose. So you can either have it in the in the kit with the instructions, or if you want just the yarn on its own, it's twenty four ninety nine for a hundred grams. Remember, it's um, blue face Leicester mixed with tensile, so it's a beautiful yarn. And then also, we the kit is available in the raspberry or the navy. Oh no, denim blue. It's called navy. Denim blue or fern green. But if you click on, if you're on the website, if you click on Watch Live and scroll down, you will see all the different options that tell you with the kits and the colourways you've got. There they are. So there is the yarn on its own, if you just want the yarn. And there are the kits. And there's the summer. So it's really easy to see. It's probably easy for you to see than me trying to explain about the different yarns and the different things. But there it's all there. Anyway. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have shopped with us today, thank you so much. And remember, you will get the free tote bag kit. Yarn Lane will be back on Wednesday at 12 o'clock with um, Sam, Bido, Sam Sabido, who is bringing back some of her kits that sold out last time that you've all been moaning about, and they've all come back, so we've restocked. But anyone who shops with Yarn Lane and Sewing Street this week will receive our tote bag. So please remember to check out. It doesn't matter whether you're watching live or whether you buy it later. Thank you to Helen for coming in today. It's been lovely to see you. And um, we will see you back here on Wednesday at 12 o'clock with Yarn Lane. And thank you.